Well, first question is an obvious one. How have the first couple of weeks in the new job been? Um, exhilarating, tiring, um, at times uh, disappointing because I want to get so much done so quickly and there are lots of uh, issues to, to, to deal with. But um, truthfully, I feel really privileged and honoured to be in doing something for all the verticals in Irish football that I used to just talk about, you know, when I, when I had my chance. So uh, there are um, a number of things that I wouldn't have expected and... I, I, I'm, you know, happy to, to say that that's a positive thing. That uh, there's some brilliant people in that building who do great things, but nobody knows about it. So we have to do something about our messaging and how uh, the great work that's been done at a grassroots level, at schools level, football for all. You know, there's there's some real work to be done there for people to understand the value of football and how these um, these these particular silos in the in the associations structure are, are doing great work and the people who are doing them. We need to know more about that. The country needs to know more. At the other end, then at the elite game, and um, you know we have the uh, the League of Ireland being launched here today, and I'm delighted with that. You know, having been in there a couple of weeks and having uh, you know sort of dealt with the the political, um, I suppose, persuasions and not that were going on, and ultimately the the support that that we uh, ended up with. It's great to be talking about football. It's great to be here looking at footballers mm. who might I add have a physique nowadays that was not around when we were getting our photos taken at the start of season back in my day. Um, they're a credit to the game and they're the most important people when you when you uh, boil it all down and I'm, I'm delighted to be here to support them and to let them know you know that that uh, the association is now an enabler for, for, for their league it's not because it's a good thing to do we're actually obliged to do it from the uh, support terms that we took uh, from Minister Ross last week so um, it, the, the onus is on us as an association to become a proper enabler uh, to make sure that at the uh, at, at the top end of the game that players are looked after and that uh, stadiums are better for them and fans uh, uh, you know I, I think that's obvious um, that needs to happen and then down through the elite part of, of, of the uh, underage game the academies etc that we're putting best practice in place in all our clubs uh, over the next five years so we've no choice in that we have to do it but there are other parts of the game you know women's football we now have a lot more money for women's football which is great we can really start to grow that uh, and I think we can thrive at it because um, our senior ladies are showing us the way you know that they're they're not so far away from from being right there at the top table so so that's encouraging we can drive that on uh, as part of, of, of our agenda which which is great and then we got we go into grassroots generally and um, the good work that's been done there that's not reported either you know we've reached the gold standard uh, UEFA gold standard which uh, I think only nine other countries have uh, at the moment in, in Europe that's great for us um, but it's not a message that's known out there everyone wants to know about the bad things so we've got to tell that story better uh, part of my job will be to make sure we do that um, and then you go to the amateur game in general people who play for fun, people who, who, who live for this game, you know, we, we have all sorts uh, uh, of reasons for, um, you know, coming into work every day and making sure those parts of the game are, are looked after. And I, I take great pleasure and I also am, am, I feel very privileged that rather than just be outside talking about it all the time as I used to be for the last year and a half, that I've been entrusted to go in and, uh, and make sure those parts of the game feel safe and that, that you know, the, the narrative and, and indeed the journey that's coming from now on will be one of support for all those areas. What have your communications been like with the players and the club so far? Because understandably, a couple of months ago, there was talk and Minister Ross said potentially the League of Ireland could fall if the FAI became insolvent. Well, that was two months ago. Thankfully, we're looking forward from now on and we're here today, you know, to, to see the guys, uh, you know, in their kit, ready to go. It, it, it whets the appetite for what's coming. So, um, yeah, th there was a lot of, uh, I suppose, um, political uh, nuts and bolts being tightened, loosened. Uh, everybody was trying to uh, get into a position at that time, you know, to suit their agendas. Um, you know, the, 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 the people uh, charged with looking after football knew we needed that support. A group went in before I got here and, and started that agenda. I think Minister Ross um, wasn't uh, in the mood for much um, debate over the matter at that point. But that happened, that, that changed as Christmas um, came and passed, as the, the new board got together. Uh, new additions to the board, I should say, because the, the, the board members are already there and uh, we're doing good stuff. So um, what's, what's happened now, I think, is we're out the other side. It's about looking forward. It's about delivering on, uh, on the terms that we agreed with 
in government in, in uh, Minister Ross's building last week that we would see to it that um, facilities at stadiums will be better, that players' conditions will be better, that academies will be built, that the women's game will be brought forward, that grassroots, you know, not only gets the pat on the back it deserves for what it does, but that its value is known throughout the, throughout the land. And, and that's not just the, the FAI people who, who help administer it, it's the coaches that have been coached it's the uh, parents, it's the volunteers, but above all, it's the participants. And, and we need everybody to feel that they're on, a new, they're on a new level now where the FAI is all about enabling, not blocking. When the announcement was made about the financial rescue package, you were quite emotional, weren't you? I was. I actually got, got it was as if we were on tenterhooks for so long, and then it happened, and we were up in a room, and there was photographs being taken, and people were there. And, and I, I'm, I'm thinking of it now. I just knew what it meant to the game. And I, know, I knew what it meant to, to the people who are bewildered by what's happened to this point. And I knew it was the turning point. Uh, I also knew that I had to get my, uh, my arson gear and make sure I do a good job when I, when, when I go in. But um, that was, that was the, the easy part. I mean, that's, that's you know, something that I find absolutely easy. It's part of me. I'm just, I'm just delighted to be in and, and I'm working in football. I mean, what, what, what a great... Uh, you know, novelty in some ways that is. This isn't a real job to be going in, yeah, working long hours, trying to trying to bring sides together, two different uh, parts of, of the job. Um, it's tough, but it's exhilarating. And that particular day, I just knew it gave us a chance. Can I ask you what changed your mind? Because you said before Christmas, CEO probably wasn't for you. Interim uh, deputy, what's the difference between the roles? I don't have the uh, financial accountability and and infrastructure uh, rebuild that a, a CEO would have. I have football, I have a lovely side of the office and when it was described to me as that, I, it, I really didn't mind what it was called, but once I didn't have to go and attend uh, board meetings and explain uh, balance sheets and uh, monthly financial reports and governance, corporate governance, etc. Once I wasn't in that bracket and I was allowed to, to, to go on the football side of it, then it was, uh, it was easy for me to say yes. Um, could have been called any title, I guess, but effectively on, on my side of the... Uh, of the desk, uh, it, it's got football with a capital F and, and all parts of it, and I, I'm I'm really enjoying it. What was your reaction when that Basketball Ireland statement came out yesterday afternoon? Well, my first reaction was uh, my two nieces played for Ireland. I used to love coming back to Tala to watch them play. I like basketball. I'm I'm, you know, uh, I, I played it once and got sent off in a schools match, so that was the end of it for me. I reached six fouls in five minutes, and the Christian brother didn't speak to me for about two years. So that's my basketball experience. But uh, in truth to you, I, I believe it's not a contest. And I believe basketball, ourselves, uh, all the other sports that are doing great things in this country should come together and have a lobby to get even more funding. I, I absolutely believe basketball should get more money. And I know they got treated very harshly uh, way back when, when the Troika were in town. You know, it was a different landscape then. You know, the country was on its knees when all that happened. But I would be the first one to support anything they would uh, put in place to, to uh, you know, drive for more funding. I would do it for all sports. There is no more and as far as I'm concerned as I'm the association there's no more us and them I believe all our sports should have a forum we should get together we should power home the uh, the ability and the value of all sports in this country and get a better deal from government all round so you know if, if Brenda wants to come and see how we did things or if somebody else is doing stuff that we could all share our knowledge and come at the political leaders who are talking a great game at the moment and, and we were we were fortunate to, 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 to get uh, support in this time uh, but at, you know at the same time there's far more to be uh, to be understood about sport and to be gained by government support. And if Basketball Ireland get a big increase in funding, they'll get a pat on the back from me. Well done, you deserve it. Negotiations going on at the moment about the All Ireland League. Your own personal position on what's happening? We'll be very supportive of uh, of what our clubs want us to do. We will enable the pathway. They've come together really strongly in the last ten months, which is great news. And. Uh, you know, as we would sit, me personally, uh, as part of, of the uh, of the football department in there and, and, and where I am, uh, if they say let's push everything and go for an All Ireland League, we will be 100% behind it. Um, on a personal level, it makes real sense to me. It looks very good, but I don't want to overstep uh, the mark here because we want our friends in the north to be just as as comfortable with things at the same time. I think there's a there's a journey to be done together there. We're very supportive of it, but if it's not to be. That doesn't mean we're going to uh, work any differently or, or, or not, you know, probably even work harder to ensure that what we have in, in our League of Ireland stays strong. 
On a very fine note, away from football, your former teammate Kevin Kilban has got engaged overnight. I just heard. I just heard. Um, so that's the end of all his nights out when he could go out at any time he wanted to and go off to the pub and go off to different things. Um, look, he, he looks really happy, fair play to him. Uh, I, I met him and Brianne when they came up to Virgin Media. Uh, they did some filming before, um, before they uh, headed off to do their thing. Um, I think he did brilliant to last as long as he did. I, uh, he couldn't stand up the first week and, and he, he ended up learning uh, how to skate. Um, he's, a, he's a brilliant lad and, and he looks happy out and we're all thrilled for him. He just won't be allowed out with us as much as he used to. I didn't know if he had the singing romance in him though. Uh, no, absolutely. He, 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 like I've seen him do, um, he, he, he does, uh, uh, what's the, the big song he does now? When we're on nights out, he has um, a load of uh, Oasis numbers. Um, yeah, so... so uh, I've seen him do, I can't even think of the name of the song he does now, but um, it was kind of rough, ready like a rocker. I didn't think he had the gentle love side to him, but, um, you know, geez, I tell you, you know, there's hope for all of uh, all of the 40 plus something uh, ex-sportsmen who think life is finished. You know, you can, uh, you can still find happiness. We'll see you at the wedding. Thanks. <laughs> if I'm invited.